Hey everybody, it's that time again. Um, I want to get on with a 175 this afternoon. I want to see if we can get that top cover off. Shouldn't take too long. Now, when I bought this, transmission was full of water. There was some oil in it, but there was a lot of water in it. Now, the first thing I did before I did anything else on this was to um, drain out everything out of the transmission. Um, and I left it like that for about a couple of days. Um, put about four gallons of diesel in there. Uh, left that for a couple of days. I drained that out. A bit more water came out on top of the diesel, or rather underneath the diesel. And finally, I changed the transmission oil on the 6465, and I put the waste oil in here. So it's full to about there with used transmission oil not done anything so it's just in an attempt i hope to stop it from rusting too badly anyway we'll see in a few minutes when we got that out uh, i've got a growing pile of bits down here and a bonnet over there new bonnet over there or new to me bonnet over there which will be heading off for a um, sandblast and prime over the next day or so along with those wheels that I bought and the front axle, new front axle and a few other bits lying around that I want to get cleaned up. They'll get off um, sandblasted and primed, I'll do whatever repairs need doing to them and um, then they'll probably go off for a final coat of a super red. Anyway Let's get what's in there out of there. Well, interestingly, there was still a good gallon or so of water came out of that before it turned into reasonably clean looking oil. So, yeah, well, depending on how much oxygen there was in the water, there might be more or less damage inside. We'll soon find out. While the last bit of that drains out, I'm going to get the PTO shifter plate off and the response control and dipstick plate off and get those bolts off around the top there. There's always one, isn't there? Who knows what's been done to that. Okay, so, rounded off bolt, six point input socket. And when you turn the thing the right way, it'll get most things out. Right, anyway, that is no longer attached.
So on this side, five bolts and one screw. Got to have the screw to fit behind the uh, response control lever. So that's, most of these were loose already because I took the foot plate off and foot plate bracket bolts onto three of these. Can you focus for thank you? Looks like this has been off not that long ago because there's a whole lot of silicon bulging out the side there. Probably to hold the water in. Or maybe it was an attempt to keep the water out. I don't know. Could be either. I want to be able to do this and hold the camera. Wow, you're amazed by my dexterity, aren't you? It's quite impressive. Go. And because of the silicon, we're going to have to. Oh, don't you love that sound? There we go. I'll get our light in a minute and we'll have a look in there. Because there's. So you can see part of the pressure control in there. That is the pressure control diaphragm. Yuck. Oh, lovely. And uh, yeah, when I get this top cover off, I'm going to do uh, the final part of the Hydraulic Horrors series and a rebuild on this. It'd be interesting to do a rebuild on this one because this one has got, I will rebuild this one with pressure control, so you'll be able to see. How Thanks, that uh, get the bolts. Off this side. And they're all different lengths because some of them hold different things on and some of them don't go through. And somebody has obviously put all of these on. Right, where they came from. Anyway, we'll fix that. Last one. looks like it has been off recently and I dropped it okay so that is the PTO control lever there's the detent mechanism for it and there's the pivot so if you look inside there's a spring and a ball or pin inside there and that looks pretty worn to me but anyway um, and that when you select engine ground um, 
neutral for the PTO, that detent locks it all in position. Anyway, that's all a bit loose and hanging out, but I'll put that to one side and we'll get that on the sandblasting, cleaning a sandblasting pile. Okay, on the first basic inspection, doesn't actually look that bad in there. Could look a lot worse. Anyway, I'm going to replace this whole casting here anyway because it's all broken off at the back. So all this is going to come out and get uh, new bearings and bushings and what have you. I'll have a proper look at the uh, PTO gears and the diff when I do that. But so far, it doesn't look bad. That's a testament, I think, to the quality of the engineering and the old uh, Banner Lane factory all those years ago. Right, before we take the top cover off, you can see that little roller in there. Hold on a second. See if I can get my bendy light to do its uh, work, its magic. Right, you see that little roller in there using there's a hundred ways to take that off but I've got the correct tool here from our friend Martin at Churchill Tools I'll put the link through to the back in link through link through to the back link through to his site in the description again I pay for these he didn't give them to me so not a paid promotion but anyway if you want one it is by far the best way to get that little roller fella out. If you don't take that out before you lift the top cover off, it'll ping out and you will never see it again. Either it'll be lost in the sludge at the bottom of the case or it'll fly out through this hole and into a flower bed or, well, I don't know, cattle eat it. I don't know, you'll never see it again. Anyway, I'm going to need both hands to do it, so I will shut you off do that and we'll be back in a second yeah so you just gently pull those little arms and the control arm apart and you can lift the roller out oh come on focus will you lift the control arm lift, lift the roller out with this right Let's see if we can lift this thing off. Right, let's have a quick look under here. It actually doesn't look bad. So there's your pressure control diaphragm. There's your pressure control valves, your dash pot here. If you remember from the 
hydraulic horrors videos, there's your dash pot, there's your pressure control valve, and uh, the linkage for it there. And let's have a look inside. Well, again, that could be so much worse. Oh, by the way, that is called a standpipe, not a stack pipe. It's a standpipe. So, if anyone calls it a stack pipe, you have my permission to punch him in the throat and tell him that it's a standpipe. Anyway, yep, yeah, doesn't look so bad. I was expecting an awful lot worse than that. Wow. Well, I think you've probably seen enough and heard enough of me today. So until next time, if you've got this far, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.